Hi, welcome to my series, Does the Bible Tell You So? I'm Dr. Jennifer Bird. I'm a biblical scholar, and I like to talk about what's going on in the Bible, Christian Bible, two primary testaments, um, and talk about what people do with what they find there. Today's topic is, was Mary Magdalene a prostitute or a sex worker? Does the Bible tell us that? And I find this particular topic really fun and interesting because of the number of ways over the centuries the um, church affiliated things um, have done outreach to sex workers or have done outreach to um, young women impregnated outs outside of marriage and there are all these ways of coming around them and taking care of them that associate with the name Magdalene so that there's a very well wrought tradition that says or that associates Mary Magdalene with sex work regardless of what the scriptures say so here's the thing Mary Magdalene and sex work. No reason whatsoever to connect the two of them. Okay, so let's talk about why people do then. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. The earliest she's referenced in any of the Gospels is in Luke chapter 8. So I'm looking at Luke's version of the Gospel. And what we have at the very beginning of chapter 8 of Luke is talking about Jesus going through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom. And the 12 were with him, as well as some women which is why many people think we can say that Jesus had female disciples as well. You just wouldn't have called them that in this context. But the 12 were with them, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Do either of those things imply prostitution or sex work? No, they do not, right? Mary, called Magdalene, is listed first. From whom seven demons had gone out. I'm going to... And then we have several other women, all of whom provided for the men and their travels. Okay, so this gospel brought to you by a bunch of females who were good with their money. Okay, um, Mary Magdalene, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. And so that's the question. You'll see really interesting depictions of this. You know, what are the seven demons that have been cast out of her? Does that mean, is that their way of saying she was a very evil person? Does that mean, is that a way of saying she'd had lots of troubles in her past, right? Is this, she'd had physical deform? Like, what, what, what is that? So there's no reason to say that means she had been a sex worker prior to meeting Jesus. Okay? There is... There's no reason to go there. Now, if they wanted to make a specific claim about Mary Magdalene as a sex worker, they would have called her a sinner. Okay? So here's what has gone down in history. There's a story immediately prior to this one I just read in Luke 8 about a sex worker anointing Jesus' feet. Then you have the story referencing several women who are named directly. So... We know who Mary Magdalene is and these other women, Joanna, Susanna, and many others. So if that sex worker in chapter 7 had been Mary Magdalene, wouldn't they have named her as Mary Magdalene in chapter 7? Uh, some people say no, just to be clever. He's not going to name her as, he's not going to name her in front of a whole bunch of people. I find that interesting. Another person has suggested that, well, of course Mary Magdalene had associations with sex work. How else did she have a whole bunch of money? She could be a widow. I don't know. There's, there are ways women did actually have businesses back in the day. They just aren't very often talked about. Um, it's very interesting, but here's the thing. The stories themselves do not. So the scripture does not tell us that she had been a sex worker prior to meeting Jesus. Um, seems very clear that the story immediately prior does have a sex worker anointing Jesus' feet. Here's where it gets tricky and confusing, or perhaps why it happened so early. Over in John's version of the anointing of Jesus' feet takes place at a different point in the, the narrative, and it is a Mary who does that anointing. It's the Mary who's the sister to Martha and to Lazarus. So that Mary, who we don't have any reason to associate with sex work either, but she does <clears throat> anoint Jesus. So we have an unnamed sex worker in chapter 7 of Luke anointing Jesus. We have a woman named Mary, who is not a sex worker that we know of, according to the story, anointing Jesus. So perhaps that gets mixed together. And then you also have it right next to and before, you know, inter right? So Mary Magdalene. 
whatever the reason we have this combination is likely helping to launch it but we do have a you know a bishop early on in the church tradition second third century who who announces it in a sermon that mary was a sex worker um <clears throat> it also is a very convenient way to dismiss the importance of a woman when you sexualize her in particular in a negative way when you focus on the body or whatever instead of who they are as a human all kinds of things that are still going on today so what does the bible tell us about mary magdalene it tells us she was one of the uh, people providing for jesus and his male disciples and their travels first and only to go to the tomb initially in john's gospel she was the first to see jesus post-resurrection according to the gospel traditions she is the only one in all four traditions to go to the empty tomb. So there's a different lists of people that go to the empty tomb initially on the, you know, the morning that Jesus is raised from the, from the dead, according to the stories. So four different lists, but she's the only consistent one throughout, you know. Um, she is known within the early traditions, whether it's canonical or early non-canonical traditions, to have some sort of importance to Jesus. So it is no surprise whatsoever to me that men in the tradition found a way to denigrate her reputation, her name, um, and in this specific particular way, right? A negative sexualization of her, which is also all kinds of complicated when you talk about sex work being negative about the woman providing it instead of the men accessing it. But anyway, no, the Bible does not tell us that Mary Magdalene was a sex worker. Have a good week. See you next time.